Okay, before we begin, <clears throat> are there any questions? Let me state, I do have grit labs uh, zero and one graded. I've got maybe about half of the people graded in lab two. Uh, lab two, in my opinion, is the easiest lab. And if you're having trouble in the uh, grading of the lab, you really should take advantage of me because I will help you in the lab. Uh, that's why I stay after I'm done, I don't know, lecturing in the lab, I stay to answer questions. And uh, particularly with lab two, if your grade wasn't too good, you should try and get some help from me. Uh, now, I know only about half of you are graded, so the rest of you will have to go on uh, lab zero and lab one. Any questions about any of that? Any questions about anything? Will the lab two grades be posted in time for us to study for the quiz to make sure that we got the answers correct? Lab two. Um, Quiz one does include lab two. Uh, I'm working on it. I'm not going to guarantee that I'll get it done on Wednesday, but I'm certainly going to try. I've got a little less or maybe around half the people graded. Okay. I'll try. That's all I can say. Thank you. All right. You can send me a reminder after uh, the lab to help remind me that I really want to get lab two graded tonight. I really wanted to get it graded last night and I tried, but I just, I just couldn't. There's too many, I've got too many students and uh, I can't get it graded in one day. <clears throat> I have a question about the quiz uh -huh. um, tomorrow. Um, yeah. On this paper, we're looking at this is just covering chapters one, 10, and the start of chapter two. So chapter three would be the next quiz. Chapter three will be on the next quiz. This quiz is going to cover chapters one and chapter 10. Okay. We did chapter 10 with chapter one. Okay. And it's going to be the start of chapter two. So that's what we've already covered in chapter two. Okay. And we'll ca cover lab zero lab one and lab two. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, so today we're going to cover lab three, microscope basics. So let's begin. Oh, that's the worksheet. Lab three, microscope basics. You need to read this lab module, the class book through textbook and chapter three through the end of the section on compound light microscopy. There will be some video clips in this lab as well as an online exercise. <clears throat> All the links are found in this um, laboratory module, which you can get. You probably already know that, but let me show you. Let me go back, go back again. 
And again, there we go. Not exactly. Um, under week, I said week three or week two. Week three lab. Module three scopes. <clears throat> And there's the worksheet. Make sure you turn in the worksheet. I've had a few people turn in the lab modules. And the first time you do it, you'll get a warning. I don't want the lab module because it's much bigger. And if everybody were to turn in the lab module instead of the worksheet, my web page would fill up, meaning they only give me so much space in Canvas. And if the Canvas web site uh, becomes full, then you guys will no longer be able to submit assignments. And I don't think you want that. So please only submit the worksheet. It's much smaller than the uh, lab uh, module. Uh, let's see, where were we? All right, so the objectives for this lab, you will not be physically using a microscope. However, we do have a virtual microscope for you to use online. And upon completion of this lab module, you should be able to locate and name the parts of a compound light microscope, along with describing their functions. Calcul be able to calculate the total magnification for each objective used uh, three, know the guidelines for focusing specimens with different objectives. We have different objective lenses on the microscope, and there will be the scanning objective lens, also called the 4X lens, the low power lens, also called the 10X lens, the high power lens, also called the 40X lens, and then the oil immersion lens, also called the 100X lens. I don't particularly like using these names because the low power lens is not the lowest and the high power lens is not the highest. You got that? So generally I go 4X, um, 10X, 40X, and 100X. Occasionally I'll call the 100X also oil immersion. And obviously you do need to know both names. Uh, be able to estimate the size of a specimen when seen using different magnification powers, meaning if you're doing using a different objective lens, you need to be able to estimate the size of the specimen. And be able to understand the rules for proper microscope care. And lastly, define the terms as associated with the microscope. Any questions about those objectives? All right, you need to know, memorize the names and the functions of these parts of the microscope. One, the ocular lens, also called the eyepieces. Two, the objective lenses. And on our microscopes in the microbiology lab, we have four objective lenses. Three, the stage, that's what you put the slide on top of. Uh, four, the stage clip that moves the slide around on the stage. Five is the control for moving the stage clip, meaning the knob for moving the stage clip. Uh, six is the iris diaphragm. It can open and shut to allow a cone of light to come up to the specimen. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, but you want to open or shut that so that the cone of light coming up is correct for the objective lens being used. Seven is the uh, condenser, and it uh, helps kind of focus the light uh, on the specimen. 
Now, on some microscopes, the iris diaphragm is below the condenser. On this picture here, the condenser is below the iris diaphragm. Eight is the coarse focusing knob, the big one. Nine, the smaller one, is the fine focusing knob. Ten is the uh, switch for turning the light or lamp on and off. Eleven is the rheostat for adjusting the amount of light coming out of the lamp. And I think in Australia, they don't use the term rheostat. And the person who made this lab comes from Australia. And so he calls it the light intensity dial. And then 12 is the light source or the lamp. Any question on these parts of the microscope? All right, this table is showing you the uh, different characteristics of the different objective lenses. And the objective lenses are all on a rotating nose piece. So this can rotate around to bring a different objective lens into place. And that they call the rotating nose piece. The scanning lens is also called the 4X power objective lens. Uh, the low power, the 10X objective lens. The high power, the 40X objective lens. Oil immersion, the 100X objective lens. The total magnification of the 4X lens is 40 times. The magnification, or I should say the total magnification, is the magnification of the objective lens which would be four times, times the objective lens of the ocular lens right here. And all of our microscopes have a 10x magnification in the lens, meaning the ocular lens magnifies 10 times. You Most microscopes do have a 10x ocular lens, However, the best and most expensive microscopes have a 20x ocular lens. We at Clark College do not have, well, I shouldn't say that, in the microscope lab, we do not have the 20x ocular lens. And I, I don't know, but I'll be willing to bet Clark College doesn't have any because they're more expensive. So that's the total magnification, the, the magnification of the objective lens times the ocular lens, which would be 4 times 10, which would be 40x. Uh, the low power, or the 10x lens, magnifies 100x times. Uh, the 40x lens magnifies 400x times. 100x, or oil immersion objective lens, magnifies 1,000 times. The depth of the field is how much of an object you can see under the microscope. <clears throat> so with the 4X objective lens, you might be able to see both the top and the bottom of a specimen because the 4X lens has the deepest depth of field. You go up in power to the 10X lens and in see, instead of seeing the entire um, image of your uh, specimen, you may only see about half of the specimen, meaning seeing from the top to about halfway, because it has a smaller depth of field. And then the 40X lens has an even smaller depth of field, and then the oil immersion lens is essentially only seeing a single plane through the specimen. And you can focus if you want it to be the top of the specimen or focus down into the specimen at some lower level. So the 100X lens has the narrowest depth of field. 
for the field of view, that's how much of the slide you can see under the microscope. I thought I had something written here. Yeah, there we go. So here's the slide and the uh, 4X lens can show the most of the slide. I don't know if you can see this, I'm trying to make it something like that. The point is the uh, field of view for the 4X lens is large. And as you go up in power to the 10X lens, the field of view will be smaller. You'll be able to see less of the glass slide. And you go up to the 40X lens, you'll see less of the glass small slide. And the oil immersion lens is only essentially a pen prick of the field of view. So it's the smallest field of view. The comments are the 4, 4X lens are the easiest lens to use because you can see the uh, object regardless of where the focusing is on the object because you have the uh, deepest depth of field as well as you have the largest field of view. So if you, you're looking at the specimen and it's over here on the field of view, you will be able to see it because the field of view is largest on the 4X uh, objective lens. And then the hardest lens to use is the oil immersion lens because it has the most narrow depth of field. You have to be focused directly on the specimen or you're not going to see it. And you have the uh, smallest field of view. So that specimen has to be in the center of your uh, field of view or you're not going to be able to see it because the field of view is very small on the uh, 100x objective lens. Any question about any of that? All right, for the total magnification, I've already told you the total magnification is the magnification of the objective lens times the magnification of the ocular lens. When you're looking at an image under the microscope, you should realize that it's more than just magnified. It is also inverted and reversed. So the letter E here will show like this under the microscope, meaning magnified, but inverted and reversed. Any question about that? All right, uh, this lab module tells you the IS diaphragm is the most important tool in the light adjustment. So to adjust the amount of light coming to the specimen, you can open up the iris diaphragm to get more light. Or conversely, you can close it down to get less light. And you would do that to see the specimen uh, better. But more importantly, the iris diaphragm uh, is the most important tool for uh, illustrating the contrast of the specimen against the background of the glass slide. So the background, all it is, is generally clear glass. And if you're viewing a, uh, a microorganism that is not stained and is alive, it's going to be pretty clear. So there will not be much contrast between the specimen and the slide. Hopefully you understand that. Anyways, you can open or shut the iris diaphragm to increase the contrast between the specimen and the background of the slide. What you do is you make the cone of light about equal to the field of view for the 
objective lens. And then you'll get the best contrast between the specimen and the uh, background of the slide. And you need contrast to be able to see the specimen from the slide. Any question about that? So that's the most important thing about the iris diaphragm. It will increase the contrast, assuming you have it set at the right level, the, the iris diaphragm. And you can open or close that iris diaphragm. Generally, with the 4X lens, it has the largest field of view. So you want to have the iris diaphragm open the widest when you're using the 4X lens. And then when you go up in magnification, you need to start shutting down the iris diaphragm because each higher magnification will have a smaller field of view. So you want to start closing down the cone of light coming to the specimen to increase the contrast. Any question about any of that? All right, when you first use the microscope, you should start with the 4X lens in place because that lens is the easiest to use. You should then use the coarse focusing adjustment knob to slowly raise the stage to bring the object into focus, at least into coarse focus. You should then I use the fine focus adjustment knob to bring the specimen into fine focus. Once you've done this, you should never use the coarse adjustment knob to do the coarse focusing. The reason is, is that our objective lenses have parafocal vision, meaning that if the object is in focus for one lens, they will be in focus for all of the other objective lenses. And if you use the coarse focusing knob after you got it in fine focus and you go to another uh, higher power objective lens, you may as well stop what you're doing, start all over with the 4X lens and use the coarse focusing knob to bring the specimen into good focus and then use the fine focusing knob to bring the specimen into fine focus. So once you've done that, you should only use the fine focusing knob. Any question about any of that? And that's because the lenses are in parafocal uh, Parafocal vision. All right. So when you're using the uh, specimen, or the, the microscope to see the specimen, if the specimen is over here with the 4X lens and your field of view is something like this, I don't know if you can see that, something like this, and the specimen is over here, if you were to go to the next higher objective lens, which in this case would be the 10X lens, the specimen will now be out of your field of view because the 10X lens has a smaller field of view than the 4X lens. So what you do is, once you have your specimen in fine focusing, before you switch to the next higher objective lens, you move the specimen into the center of your field of view. Then when you go up to the next higher objective lens, the specimen will still be in your field of view. So you always move the specimen to the center of your field of view before you go up in power to the next higher objective lens. 
Any question about any of that? All right, using the oil immersion lens or the 100X objective lens takes a special care or a special step. And that is you need to add oil to the oil immersion lens. That's why we call it oil immersion lens. This lens only works at least well when you add oil. And if you do not add oil, it doesn't work any better than the 40X objective lens. And the 40X objective lens is easier to use. So you may as well use only the 40X lens if you're um, not using oil. What you do to add oil is you take the 40X lens and you take it halfway out from where the specimen is. So the specimen will be straight down. You move it halfway in. That will move the 100X lens also halfway in, okay? But not over the specimen. So you have it so that none of the lenses is over the specimen. They're halfway away from the specimen or halfway uh, in the specimen. And then that will allow you to come in to where the specimen is. I don't know if you can see this. I'm trying to show you something. And make it like that. And then you can come in with your eyedropper or something of oil, the tube of oil, and put a single drop of oil on your specimen. And then you rotate the 100X lens through that drop of oil, meaning the 100X lens will be close enough to the slide. You put a drop of oil on top of the slide that uh, lens will come into the drop of oil. Oil has the same refractive index as glass, which will allow more light to be gathered by the lens. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, I think when we talk about chapter three in the lecture, but uh, uh, oil has the same refractive index as glass, so there will be no refraction between the glass slide and the air and between the air and the glass of the objective lens. With no refraction, you'll be able to collect more light to come through the specimen to be captured by the objective lens. And that will greatly increase the resolution and the clarity of the image. Any question about any of that? All right. If you use oil on the, the slide, which you always should use if you're using the oil immersion lens, then you'll need to clean oil from the, the microscope, particularly the 100x lens. Uh, paper, like paper towel or chem wipes, contains wood fibers in the paper, and wood fibers can scratch the lens, which would interfere with your clarity of seeing the specimen. And also, if you scratch the lens, you'll have to use it all term long because. Uh, uh, it's unlikely that Clark College will buy new um, objective lenses. They're the most expensive part of the microscope. So we don't use paper to clean the oil off the lens. You only use lens paper. Lens paper is special paper that has been treated to remove the wood fibers from the paper. So the only thing you students would use to clean the microscope is lens paper. It is true we have lens cleaning fluid and Q-tips, but generally when students have a problem, they usually call the instructor over and then the instructor 
cleans the the uh, lens with the with the uh, lens liquid cleaner, the cleaning solution, meaning we don't give it to students. And uh, and generally we don't have Q-tips for you to clean uh, the lenses also. So uh, generally only the instructor uses the Q-tips. So students generally will only use lens paper to clean the lens, which its purpose is obviously to remove oil from the lens as well as to clean any junk that might be on the lens. All right, so for activities on this lab, you're not gonna be performing any of these activities with a real microscope. We only have a virtual microscope for you to use, which is one you use online. But you will be expected to know the information contained in the table and how to use the formula for uh, getting a the size of the specimen under a microscope. You'll also be expected to know the activity one for getting the size of the field of view. Now here's the table we've given you. Uh, normally in the lab, we give you a ruler and ask you to measure the field of view for the 4X lens, the 10X lens, the 40X lens, and the 100X lens. You guys can't really do that. So we're giving you the measurements in this table. So the 4X lens has a field of view of 4.5 millimeters. That's 400, 4,500 micrometers. The 10X lens has a field of view of 1.8 millimeters, which is 1,800 micrometers. The 40X lens has a field of view of 0 0.45 millimeters, which is 450 micrometers. The field of view for the 100X uh, lens is 0 0.18 millimeters, which is 180 micrometers. You need to use this table to uh, estimate the size of an object under the microscope. For example, if you were using the 10x objective lens and the specimen were to fill up half of the field of view of the field of view of the 10X lens, what would be the size of that object? Anyone guess? Point 0.9 millimeters. Point 0.9 millimeters is correct, or 900 micrometers. And that's because the field of view is 1.8 millimeters. And if the object fills up half of the size of the field of view, then it would be half that or 0 0.9 millimeters. Any question about any of that? You will be asked to make measurements of specimens in this lab. You may be asked to do it in the quiz too. I don't remember, I'd have to look it up. So it is important to know the diameter of the field of view for the different objectives so that you can estimate the size of the specimen that you are observing. How would that work during a quiz if we were like quizzed on that? How would, is it just us guessing based off what it looks like? Because- I would, I would tell you in the quiz what objective lens you're using. And I would probably give you the a size of the field of view, and then make some statement about how big the object was in the field of view. Or maybe I would even show you a picture 
of the field of view, giving this the size, not the size, but showing you the specimen within the field of view. Sorry, here I'm blowing my nose. All right, any other questions? All right, in an activity two, you're gonna be observing a prepared slide. You're gonna be doing this in a uh, virtual microscope online. You are expected to understand the virtual exercise and this laboratory exercise. So you need to know and understand the material in this exercise. And this is the steps of the exercise. You can read through it. In activity three, we're not going to be making a wet mount, but we put it here for you to read. You won't be able to do it on the virtual microscope, but uh, um, if you've never made a wet mount, this is the steps you use for making a wet mount. We're not going to perform this activity and you will not be tested on it, but you should know how to make a wet mount if you come out of microbiology. Any question on that? So it's because you should know this. We have it here, so you should read through it, but you will not be tested on making a wet mount. And as I stated, you're not going to be handling a real microscope, but because you've taken microbiology, you are expected to know how to correctly store a microscope. And you should use the following steps prior to storing your microscope away. Uh, first, lower the stage completely, remove the slide from the stage, and put the slide away in the appropriate place. If you use oil immersion oil on the scope or the slide, you need to wipe the oil off the 100x objective lens using lens paper. Never use Kim wipes, paper towels, or any other paper product to remove the oil. If you did use oil, you should also check the 40x lens. I forgot to mention that before. Because if you move, if you use oil on the 100x lens, and then you move the uh, objective lenses around, if you bring the 40x lens over the specimen, the 40x lens is lower enough that it will pick up the oil, meaning it'll touch the oil of the uh, drop of oil. So it's low enough that it too will get in the drop of oil. And so you should always check the 40X lens as well as the 100X lens if you're using oil. The other lenses are not low enough to pick up the drop of oil, so they don't need to be checked. Meaning the 4X lens and the 10X lens should not get oil on them. and then put the 4X objective into place, meaning move the 4X lens over where the specimen was. Uh, lower the light intensity dial, meaning lower the rheostat to minimum. Turn off the light, unplug the microscope and wrap the cord neatly around the microscope. You can skip number seven. Uh, use both hands when you're carrying the microscope. Put one hand on the arm of the microscope and the other hand should be on the base, under the base of the microscope. Let me uh, show you the arm of the microscope. Uh, for right here, this region here is the arm of the microscope, which would be this region here. And then the other hand should be under the base of the microscope. Uh, 
and put the microscope back in the same cupboard. Uh, their, their cupboards are numbered, should go in the same cupboard you took the microscope out of. And a microscope has an appearance. I'm trying to demonstrate with my cup here. It's obviously not a microscope, but I don't have a microscope here. Actually, I do have one, but it's tucked away. Um, so when it's put in, we're going to say this is the, the side with the uh, eyepieces. It should go in the cupboard the same way you found it, where the eyepieces are facing you or out of the cupboard. And then the other part is the front of the microscope is inside the cupboard. So know the terms of this lab. And then let's go to the laboratory exercises. I'm going to switch to the uh, worksheet. Remember to only turn in the worksheet. I don't think I switched. There it is. So here is a uh, video clip on general focusing of a microscope. So watch that video. And uh, this is a little video on putting oil on the uh, slide when using the oil immersion lens. And then this is a practice on your microscope terms and skills uh, using a virtual microscope. So click this uh, link and depending on how fast your internet connection is, it may take a while to load. This is taking a little while to load, but I've got a fairly fast internet connection, so uh, it's pretty good. And there's one, two, three, four, five different options you can choose, five different tabs. Uh, we're going to be using the Explore tab, but uh, let's take a look just at the test tab. If you want to practice some microscope questions, uh, this will be on care and usage of the microscope, calculating the magnification and the terminology. Let's go to terminology. So this terminology will be on oil immersion lens. I don't know what X is. I can't read that. Let me blow that up. Ring light. I'm not sure what that is. Resolution. Oh, I had a question. I didn't see it. Terminology. All right, I must have missed it right there. A lens system ability to resolve find details of the observed object is resolution. Uh, let me blow this up because I'm having a hard time viewing this. A separate light connected to the microscope body that produces a ring of light. I call it a cone of light. An independent light that usually connects to the microscope body and gives off a ring of light. Uh, so that would be a uh, ring light, the light source. Anyways, that's how you go on the quiz. Let me shrink this down now so I can get out of here. Go back to the main. And let's go on explore. Uh, generally, the question mark is where you should click on this. A guide tip, explore a variety of slides and magnification in this completely open microscope environment. I suggest you look at the plant slides and then look at the onion root tip, cells of the onion root tip. Here we're looking at the slide under the microscope, 
and this is using the 4x lens because it's circle. So what you need to do is coarse focus to bring the specimen into coarse focus. And someplace around here. And then go to fine focus to get it in fine focus. And then move it to the center of your field of view, which you can't really do in the virtual uh, microscope because you can't move. Oh, you can move it. I guess you can. I didn't know that. Interesting. I just learned something new. <laughs> uh, move it to the center of your field of view and then go to the 10x <clears throat> and use fine focus from here on only. I can't see uh, the... Uh, I want to focus in on the chromosomes. Let's go up to the 40x power. Oh, there's some chromosomes there. And then fine focus to get it in best focusing. Someplace around here. Adjust the light if needed. <clears throat> Actually, that's a little better. And that's how you use the virtual microscope. Any question? Uh, let's go up to the 100x lens. And it tells you you need to add oil immersion oil. And that uh, question mark is what you do to add it. Click on that. And that adds a drop of oil. You now need to find focus again. And it seems to have moved. Oh, there they are. The uh, chromosomes. I was trying to focus in on the chromosomes there. All right, any question on that? So then to end, you remove the slide and it's gonna tell you, you need to use lens paper to clean the slide and the uh, objective lens. And so you grab the lens paper and there that clean the slide, put the slide away, clean the lens, I mean, put the uh, slide away. And if you notice the, uh, Objective lens switch because you're supposed to put the 4X lens in place before you put the microscope away. All right, any question? This is working better here than my previous lab. I didn't get the main coming back and the students had to uh, uh, hit the refresh button to get to the thing again, but this allowed you to come back to the main and come back here. All right, any question on any of that? So practice with the uh, virtual microscope. I guess I'm gonna shut that down. And then we have a little link for practice naming the parts of the microscope. It tells you to press the play button there. Uh, be careful on what you're doing here. You don't want to download something um, on your computer. So press the play button here and then come back up to the top and it tells you the arm. So you need to select the arm of the microscope. And I'm going to show you what happens when you answer the question incorrectly. It uh, goes bonk, if you heard that. And uh, we answer it incorrectly again and again. Three times it'll tell you, you missed, you struck out. And then it'll go purple to show you this is what the correct answer is. And I selected it and it's red because you struck out. You uh, tried three times and you didn't get the answer correct. And then it says the light source. This one, I'll show you what it is when you answer it correctly. If you answer correctly, it'll show it green as opposed to red. And if you answer it 
stage clip and I'm going to go to the stage first. So that's incorrect. And then at the stage, it's yellow to say you missed once. With the bass, I'm going to miss twice. And now go to the bass. It's a darker yellow or uh, an orange color because you missed twice. Any question on that? Anyways, this will help you practice naming the parts of the microscope. There's the stage. And then on this worksheet, fill in the blanks with the correct answers. For A, when focusing a specimen, you should always start with what objective lens? For B, when using low power, high power, and the oil immersion objectives, only what focusing adjustment knob should be used? So that would be the fine focus or the coarse focus adjustment knob. For C, the type of microscope used in the lab is the one, two microscope. So we have a two word name for our microscopes. And this would be a type of microscope. Do not tell me the brand of microscope. Some students put in there like a Nikon microscope. And a Nikon is a brand. It's also only one word. But uh, you need to tell me the type of microscope it is. I'll give you a hint. It is not an electron microscope. All right, 4D, you should carry the microscope holding onto what part of the microscope with one hand and by supporting the blank with the other hand. 4E, the objectives attached to this part of the microscope, excuse me, the objectives are attached to this part of the microscope, which can be rotated to click the different objective lenses into place. So name that part. 4F, if a microscope has an ocular lens of 10x and a high power objective of 45x, what would be the microscope's total magnification? Put that there. 4G, when the stage is moved left, the image viewed through the oculars moves in what direction? When the stage is moved forward, the image viewed through the oculars moves in which direction? 4H, the object, which objective lens provides the largest FOV that stands for field of view? 4I, which objective lens has the smallest field of view? 4J, of the methods for light adjustment, which is the most important on the microscope? 4K, how large is the field of view when using the high power objective lens? And I think I've got this in your worksheet. I'm surprised I do not have it. Uh, you need to tell me the measurement in millimeters or micrometers. And let me check to make sure I've got that on your worksheet. That is in ours. Thank you. Don't need to check now. I'm surprised I don't have it on mine, to tell you the truth, but uh, I am on the worksheet, aren't I? Yeah. So I want the exact size, not if the field is view small, I want the exact measurement. And then question two, suppose a typical bacteria cell is two micrometers in diameter. In the circle below, which represents the field of view, when viewed with the oil immersion objective lens, state how many cells can fit across the circle under the oil immersion lens. Any question there? 
So you need to use some calculations. And I think in your questions, I state, uh, provide your measurements. Um, provide your calculations for full credit. All right. Any question about this lab? If not, go ahead and get started. I'll be here until at least 4.30 to help you with the lab. Thank you.